wagon. As we welcome you back to Bank of California Stadium, the United States, a 4-0 lead over Belgium. All four goals scored uh, via the head in the first half. Two by Carly Lloyd, one by Lindsey Horan, and one by Sam Mewis. Two changes for the U.S. Ashlyn Harris going in goal. Abby Dahlkamper coming in at the center back position. One for Belgium. Elena Dunk will come in uh, as a striker. Alex Morgan also making her way up. Game on here in the second half. As already, Vidal Comper showing you her range of passing. She started against Australia on Thursday, partnered with Becky Sauerbrunn. That is what we expect to be the starting two center backs. On June 11th, when the U.S. takes on Thailand. Moran. Changes here. Six allowed for both teams. Kristen Press can't get there. Get through the substitutions here. Alex Morgan, who got a 100th goal on Thursday, picks up her 160th tap today. And the 29 year old, such a huge piece of the United States in this summer's World Cup in France. has five changes uh, available to them still. The U.S. has three. What a wonderful halftime presentation that was with the 99ers. Dal Kemper. Sally Krieger, she's going to go back. Kemper is going to shield that, so... Ashlyn Harris can come off her line. Tonight she picks up her 21st cap. Deneva. A little bit of flip, flip there to Masipo now. Filchins. It's a little bit of possession here for Belgium, but it has been difficult for them to carve out a singular chance here tonight. Making it back from the field. That is some quick work. Is 99er Julie Fowdy. Wow, that was a wonderful halftime celebration. Oh, so fun. So fun. Oh, still got a burst, too, Glenn. How many minutes did I miss? Two? Two and a half. Not bad. Miss much. You got up here very quickly. The changes here, Julie, if you don't know. Dal Comper is on. Alex Morgan is on. In the United States and Ashlyn Harris has come in goal. So Jill Ellis making some changes here, giving opportunity to a number of players here tonight like we expected. So great to see Alex Morgan score that 100th. And she said yesterday, that she, she said they were kind of coming easy in the 80s and 90s, and then I get to like 98 and it started to slow down, and then I started thinking about it. <laughs> she said, so I was happy to get that over with before the World Cup, to reach that milestone and not have to carry that one, because I can remember with Mia, that was a big deal as well. The pressure of getting to the 100th, and what a club she joined. The seventh member among those legends. Sipo's going to try to lay this on. Ashlyn Harris will get a touch here. A very important role. It's the backup going to the World Cup this summer. Big switch here. Carly Lloyd has got some space here. Morgan fights to win it back to Carly Lloyd now. Cross is cut out. And we 
mentioned early in the first half, Megan Rapino not available here tonight, did not train yesterday. Kelly O'Hara, another one to be thinking about. And the ankle surgery. And let's go back to the outside back position today here because how much can you really take out of this game? Because yeah. essentially you really haven't been under a lot of pressure, yeah, certainly from a defensive standpoint. It's a great point. I think if you want to really see where Alec Krieger is in the depth chart, you got to put her in against Australia. That's why I think a lot of fans were clamoring for that uh, to see where she's at. I mean, it's nice to get some confidence in minutes, but... U.S. on the attack. We'll get back to that in a minute. And easily handled there by the goalkeeper, Nikki Evron. But the thing about Ali Krieger that you already know is she's got a wealth of experiment, experience, two World Cups under a belt, one in the 2015 World Cup as well, 2016 Olympics, and she brings a ton in terms of team chemistry. Super positive. The team, of course, welcomed her back with open arms. It's been there, done it. Right. And talking to Ashlyn Harris yesterday, she said the thing people don't know about Ali Krieger is that she would wake up every day and bust her butt to train for this moment today because she knew she would get another look. And how many times have we seen a player who maybe gets cast aside for a year or two, especially this is two years now since she's had a start, who say, okay, my run is done, I'm done. Right? I'm not going to train at the same level, I don't need to. And Krieger, to her credit, said, I'm going to be ready when that moment comes. Morgan to Lloyd. Lloyd back on her right back heel. Morgan puts it into the upper roof of the net. It is 5-0 U.S. The architect, Carly Lloyd, the finisher, Alex Morgan. Sprayed wide to Carly Lloyd, seen in a different position, coming from midfield. And this is where Alex Morgan, you get that on her left foot, and she knows I don't need to put some pace on this. I just need to lift it over the keeper. What a nice little touch by Carly Lloyd. And to beat that keeper near post, the little finesse there. And that's the maturation as well of Alex Morgan, her 101st goal. In 160 matches. scoring seven minutes into the second half. It's the very overmatched Belgium. The 27th European nation the U.S. have played in their history. In the first ever meeting here. Belgian attacks here. Can they get ahead on this? No, it's headed away by Del Kemper. It's for that wonderful uh, North Carolina Courage team, coached by Paul Riley. The U.S. roster will go back and join their NWSL teams. Good work there for Kruger to cut the pass off. Belgium still alive on this attack, though. U.S. breaking out. U.S. getting players in front of the ball. Morgan sticks it towards the corner. Who's going to get there? Rather easily. Who's cross is blocked. And 
and that's called passing the penetrate, taking the words from Jill Ellis from Alex Morgan. <laughs> And she says, why would we be passing to pass when you have the type of front three like we have and then two sitting on the bench who are equally talented? And look at that stat right there, when unbeaten, when that woman has scored. It's a pretty remarkable statistic, 60-0 and 10. And Alex Morgan scores the United States. Press will knock it back. Krieger. That's a hard driven cross to the far post. Nobody going to get there after the goal kick. Let's go back and take a look at this uh, Alex Morgan goal. The architect, Carly Lloyd. A nice little pass with her back heel. Morgan doesn't panic, doesn't try and hit it with power. She sees there's a little gap there. And it's on that favorite left foot, as we know. Five of those all-time scoring leaders here tonight in this building. Yeah, and Carter Lloyd actually bumped up to 107 on that list after tonight. Pew. Uh, taken off it by the neighbor. Yeah, think about that. Five of them here tonight. I didn't even thought of that. Never happened before, I don't think. I have to give a big shout-out to Becca Rue. The executive director of the Players Association because she's the woman who made all of this possible and that's why you have those five legends here along with the 99 team. And this is the first time the entire U.S. women's national team player, anyone who's played for the national team has been, has come together for a reunion like this and what fun it has been. On the other hand, I will look at it from purely a competitive standpoint. What an uplifting moment to present to the current national team ahead of what's coming. Yeah, and it's, it's so neat to, to get to spend some time with this current team. I, of course, get to do that with this, with my work, but a lot of these 99ers and older alumni just don't get that opportunity. Here's Krieger, playing at Penn State. Krieger has played in a number of places. Played for Frankfurt, Germany, also played in Sweden. Moran, Sauerbrunn, Dahlkemper, Mallory Pugh. What about assessing Mallory tonight? I think her movement has been good. I think that they have given Belgium a lot of time and space on the ball for the U.S. team. You're seeing them break it down. Would have liked to have seen her a little bit more involved. for France now. Just by the day continues to simmer and it ultimately, ultimately hit a boiling point. ESPN's coverage is brought to you by Volkswagen, presenting partner of U.S. Soccer. Change going to be made here for Belgium. Mark Couturils will come on. Off will come Helen Jacques. 87th cap for Kuderils. And Sherry Van Bella will come on for Davina Filchins. atmosphere here tonight. There was no question about that. And you knew with all the changes in this group, with six changes, Jill Ellis trying to figure out, as we talked about in that first half more, 
the depth of this team and where she could put players and how long she could put players. You knew this was going to be a fired up U.S. team coming in here, especially some of those players are fighting for a chance for a roster spot. They're fighting for a chance for a starting spot. go to Kate Margraff, who's with the legendary goalkeeper, Brianna Scurry. Well, I'm here with one of the best goalkeepers in U.S. history, male or female. Right. We're heading the double overtime. PKs are looming. What was your mindset knowing as a starting goalkeeper, you're going to be facing some of the best penalty kickers in China? My job was just to stop one. That's all I was thinking about. I knew everybody who was going to shoot a PK was going to make their PK, and my job was to save one. And it was just an amazing feeling, and I just loved it. And I was just really focused on that one thing and one thing only. So that one that you had to save came in the third opportunity. How did you know that that was going to be the one that you could save? Normally I have a method of operations where I don't even look at the kickers, and I don't even look at our kickers or their kickers. And that particular one, when I came into the goal, something in my mind said, look, and I knew that this was the one. I saw her come up to the PK spot. Her shoulders were down. Her head was down. She didn't look like she was really that excited about being there. And I just knew. It's hard to explain it other than that. I just knew. So that win was one of the most significant victories in U.S. soccer history, in women's sporting history. How did that change the landscape for women in sports in this country? I think our victory really did a lot, not just for women's soccer or for women in general, but for the world, honestly. I mean, so much more attention has been paid to women ever since that victory. I think what we did was we showed the world that women can be powerful, women can be strong, women can play a great athletic event, and really influence and really inspire uh, a, a little world and that's what we did I mean it's really amazing the, the different effect that we had on everyone and not only women but on men as well and it's really truly amazing and I'm very blessed to have been a part of it all right thanks so much for your time right, thanks Tom. nice to see you have I said how much I love these women tonight I think you have <laughs> well I, I, love like, I like her point though because oh, you know them. when you watch you know, the 2015 World Cup, and when you watch this World Cup in 2019, you have to feel very proud about 99 and what it did to influence investment into women's programs around the world. And I'm talking strictly soccer right now, and I go, I know it goes beyond that. Mm -hmm. Belgium. And you think you were a part of influencing countries to invest in women's sports that's that's big stuff yeah I, I mean i will say i i am impatient and and that i think it took a little too long we thought that would be the catalyst that would tip those federations and those countries and change mindsets and cultures and what we understand now is that culture shifting cultures and mindsets takes a lot more time than that but you're starting to see that of course but th those women, I mean, when you hear them speak, the perspective, and that's what I always loved about that team. It was so much more than winning. Of course, winning was important. And standing on top of a podium was everything to us. But there was a perspective about that inspiration. Hold that thought. Here's Carly Lord. We know she has power. She also has found Alex Morgan. She whips it in. It's mishandled. Goes out for the corner. And they just understood the bigger picture in a way that makes me so proud. Well, let's not forget you did it on and off the field as well. Yeah. Harley Lloyd again, finding Morgan, releasing that. What should be really an easy save for Everard. It's getting late and it's getting a little wet. Just being pressed now to take the corner. Cluster of players at the penalty spot. They all break off in different directions. It's punched down. Krieger couldn't get there. Belgium does not have a lot in front of the ball, which makes it problematic here. And it allows ooh, heavy collision here. Sipo and Lloyd. Lloyd's going to get a yellow card. To go along with her day of two goals via the head. You can see how much this matters to Carly Lloyd. She's fighting in there for everything. Jessica McDonald 
playing up front now as well for the United States. And, and that's an element as well that Jill Ellis is looking at in terms of this is a, a raw talent. We've seen how good she has been at the professional level with the NWSL. But a player that can come in at the end of games on set pieces, great in the air. She's strong. She's fast. And finally getting her look at possibly going to her first Women's World Cup. Ali Long also coming on as well. Remember back in 2017, the U.S. were trying out a three-back system with her in the middle of uh, two defenders on either side of her? Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, experimentation that uh, went on since 2015. Here's McDonald. For all your soccer needs, check out ESPN FC on ESPN Plus every day. Start your free trial now by downloading the app or going to ESPNplus.com. Another corner for the U.S. Ricky Everard has uh, been a human pinata today, peppering the shots from every angle. Header. Goes over the top. Let's go to Kate Margraff with Brandy Chastain. Hi, I'm with Brandy. I'm trying to <laughs> tell my teammates to not be doing shot, shot, shot as they're singing that. They're getting a bit crazy. Uh, Brandy, we are in the middle of watching the women play, but I always go back to the fact that this is the 20 year celebration of the 99, that you were the fifth penalty kick taker. And if you converted it, we would win. If you didn't, then we would go basically to sudden death. Six, six, seven, seven. I was 10, I was terrified. <laughs> so I was very happy you made it. But what was going through your mind as you approached the ball? Yeah, I think, you know, in those moments, you just rely on the work that you've done prior to that and all the support you know that you have. And literally in that moment, it was don't look at the goalkeeper. Because she had psyched me out earlier in the year when we lost and I missed a PK against China in the Algarve. And I didn't want to give her that chance again. And everybody had done everything right. Bry made a save, all the kickers made their their kicks, and it was just my turn to follow through. So success is very rarely a straight line. You were on the 96 yeah. starting team that won the Olympics, then was cut and brought back. How did that feel to be the one that made that kick in that moment after what you'd been through in the, the previous few years? Yeah, I think the, the number one thing I look to is the, the gratitude that I had to towards Tony DiCicco just to see that, you know, that was a player that had won a World Cup, wasn't in the 95 World Cup, and he brought me back before the Olympics, and the trust that he had in me, you know, I'm, I'm eternally grateful to him and his family, and I, I to be honest with you, I love soccer. I've always loved it. I love it today. I get as excited about watching these women as I do about being with these, these players. And, you know, I just wanted to contribute in, in any way possible. And what I loved about it is that Tony gave me a chance um, to make that kick. And, and I think that was a statement from him to me saying, I got your back. And that, that's pretty powerful. So this team is trying to do something no American team has yeah. done, which is win back-to-back -back world championships. What advice would you give them to help them on their quest? Yeah, I think stay, you know, stay the course. One game at a time. Stay together. You know, no matter what the lineup is, no matter if you're starting, you're on the bench, you're coming off the bench, you know, every player will contribute something to the outcome. And if you stick together, you're going to be doing great things, and I have you winning. Thanks, Brandy. <laughs> you got it. Wow, there's been some tremendous advice mm. uh, dispensed here today from all the 99ers. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that uh, Tony DiCicco, uh, the late great Tony DiCicco, mm. is being mentioned here a lot tonight. And his wife, I don't know if you saw that at halftime, Diane DiCicco is here in his honor, and two of his boys, Anthony and Alex. So that was really fun. We got to see all of them this morning, and of course, the team is hanging with them tonight. Pretty good. She's got space, gets her head up, drives across to the far post, headed away. Did I see it? Of course I did. I was watching it up here like uh, everybody I, else in the stadium. Oh, here's Lloyd now, trying to line up the right foot. Since your partner left you, I didn't know how much work you had then. Into the box it comes. A chance for another here for the U.S. This will go wide. That was Alex Morgan. No, excuse me, that was Kristen Press. Sipo 
Bellow trying to head it forward. This uh, back form has been under pressure this entire game. Such a struggle to get out of their own half. And that's intentional, of course. That's something the U.S. has been working on a ton. You see Alex Morgan there tracking that ball, flying to the sideline. They take a lot of pride, those front three, whoever they are, in being that first line of defense. And it's a mantra that Jill Ellis has hammered in over and over again. That the best offense starts with a great defense from that front line. Give and go here. This is one of the poor promising moments here for Belgium. And they're going to earn a free kick here. After that foray forward. Davidson will get caught for the foul. Effectively, this moment here tonight is most players, one would think that Belgium has had in the U.S. penalty area at any moment here today. Four in the box right now. Sebo sits around the arc. U.S. defending this zonally. Headed away there powerfully by Sam Lewis. 72nd minute. 5-0, the United States over Belgium. And as great as the strides have been for Belgium, as we've talked about in these last few years especially, you can just see the difference in levels, can't you? I mean, this is a Belgian team that just narrowly missed the World Cup. Tied Switzerland and didn't go through, tied them twice, didn't go through on away goals. playoffs for the World Cup but there is a difference in class for sure and that really when you when you think about it is going to be one of the biggest strengths of this U.S. team going in to the World Cup especially with how many games you play is the depth when you can start press Carly Lloyd and Mal Pugh as your alternative front three there's not a lot of countries that have the depth in that front line, in that front six that the U.S. is showing right now. And we didn't, we haven't even talked about Tobin Heath tonight. Yeah, that's scary to think about. Tobin Heath is on the bench. The U.S. does have one more sub available here tonight, 73rd minute. We haven't talked about Rose Lavelle in that higher position. I mean, injured, both of those, Tobin Heath not injured, but Megan Rapino and, and Rose Lavelle out due to injuries. So, You'll see here that Sam Mewis uh, is going to the far side of the field because she's being subbed out. A new rule, the player being substituted must leave the field to play at the nearest point on the boundary line. So, greatest to make rule the change run. ever. Yeah, keeps things moving. Yeah, right? You hated that run across that field when you were in the corner. Another one of the rules is yellow and red cards for misconduct can be issued to team officials. There's one more that we're going to need a little bit more time to explain. We might do it right now. On a goal kick and a free kick for the defending team in their own penalty area, the ball will be in play as soon as the kick is taken. So a player on the opponent, as long as they're started outside the penalty area, or we're not given the proper time to exit the penalty, can play the ball before it leaves the penalty area. But if this was played right across the box, McDonald or somebody could come in there and cut that pass out the minute it's struck. Morgan. Press. Bullard. He's been coming deeper here. He's trying to play make, and he's broken up by Davidson. Depth up front uh, that you talk about. And the big three of Morgan, Rapino, and Heath. You know, Morgan surrounded by two dribblers like that and players that can penetrate and eliminate people and pull center backs. 
off of Alex Morgan. That is just frightening. And it's so hard to focus in on one of those players. Who are you going to try and put your attention to? Because when you do that, then you're going to get hit by another one. And all three have been playing confidently and scoring goals and great movement on both sides of the ball. I mean, the one thing you think about with that three is you got to stay healthy. It's been really the Achilles heel of, of Tobin Heath and Megan Rapino and Alex Morgan for so long. Is It's good news that when Rapino grabbed her calf against Australia, she says that it's, this is just to be cautious. There's a penalty spot. Second ball, Lloyd is there. As you mentioned before, those three work incredibly hard the minute the ball is lost. So uh, there's no rest for opposing defenders. You can't you can't turn the mine off for a second or two. Does that not get you ready for the World Cup this summer? Awesome, right? So good. And lights everywhere in the Bank of California Stadium. Legendary moments. Shell Akers. And then Christine Lilly would head this off the line behind Brianna Scurry. Mm. Scurry would make the legendary save. <laughs> Up with step Brandy Chastain for one of the most iconic mm -hmm. moments in sports history. So what do you think about that, Julie Fadden, uh, being still, a part of that? Still gives me the chills. 
I just smile when I see that. Best phase of play here tonight for Belgium. 80th minute. So let's look at the U.S.'s group here in France. Thailand, Chile, Sweden. How about some thoughts on the group? Well, look at looking at those first two games. Those are six points, you would think, for the United States. And then you go into that Sweden game with both teams probably sitting on six. And it's interesting because if you finish first in that group F, you most likely will hit Spain and then France, which is... France in Paris in your quarterfinal matchup. So there is talk of people saying, would you try and get second out of that group? But you still, I mean, that's a dangerous game to play. You're still going to hit probably Germany then on if you finish second in that group. So I think you're going to see that third match in Group F going to be a doozer. And how about that if it turns out to be the United States and France in Paris for that quarterfinal? U.S. of course losing to France three to one earlier this year in January, and it could have honestly been a lot more for France. It could have been a worse loss for the United States. The French will have the support of a nation behind them. You know, 2015. How did you think Canada dealt with the pressure of being the host nation? I thought that I thought it gripped them a bit. Yeah, it's hard. And that's the thing with the French team that we've always seen is that mental side of it for them. They've been consistent about getting to the semifinals or getting close, but they've never been able to get over that hurdle. And, and having lived through one where you hosted it yourself, it's a lot of pressure, especially in a, a country like France where they're trying to grow the women's game. So they know if they can pull off a successful tournament, it will transform their sport. It's a, it's a, a lot of added pressure with that as well but so much fun to be able to play in front of your home crowd like that. Wouldn't change it for the world. Host every tournament if you could. Yeah, it can manifest into so many good things, that additional support you get. Carly Lloyd trying to break her way through. Good solid 80 minutes for Carly Lloyd right now. And I know we have said this is not the, it's not the level of Australia, but think about her night how much she's been involved with. Those first two goals, the assist to Alex Morgan. Playing in two different positions. She was up high in the nine to start. Now she's in the 10. talking earlier, Glenn, about that 2015 World Cup. I think one largely on the backs of the defense for the United States. So this is going to be interesting. 2019, as we've talked about, 10 goals given up this year. Conceded by the United States. They gave up all of 10 and 20 games last year in 2018. Collective defending positioned the U.S. for that moment when Morgan Bryan was injected into the lineup. By the way, is not here. Coach's decision. And the U.S. would then take off and go on and win the 2015 Women's World Cup with that remarkable hat trick in the final from Carly Lloyd. But the talk and positioning herself to win that was all based on collective defending. Zuboni on, long on, very long knocks it back. Dal Kemper, McDonald to press. To play from Zerboni, Davidson now towards McDonald. Experience 
that's being gained by these players now coming on for Belgium. Sarah Vance will come on. <laughs> it's John Legend again with his daughter on his shoulders. I've just been giggling watching them on the sideline here. They're literally at field level, and Luna has been dancing along that sideline. I think that's Stu Holden's daughter down there as well. Stu was down there with him. Good to see that crossover uh, support from men and women's national team players, which you've seen. Morgan. McDonald. Big chance for McDonald to produce a goal here. Morgan busting free again. Donald in the perfect position. She knows it's coming. Just couldn't finish it technically. And those are ones you don't even have to give much pace. You're just really redirecting it in. All right, laughter permitted with Julie Foudy, the podcast, new episodes weekly. You can listen on Apple and Spotify. Who's the next guest? John Legend? <laughs> right. Michaela Schifrin. Many would say the greatest skier of all time, even at just 24 years old. We actually were with her at her house in Vail this week. It was so much fun. Happened to get in a little snowboarding as well. Press. Got some space. We'll square it back. McDonald trying to throw her head at that. I'll tell you what, though. I laughed so hard with Mia that I cried. I snorted. I, I mean, I, I listened to it a third time with my husband, and he was like, oh, my gosh, you're laughing just as hard. Mia, the current episode, is so funny. She's just a character. A lot of people don't get to see that side of her as well. She's got one of the driest senses of humor. Been fun. Looking forward to it. I'm going to listen to it after permitted. This is a driven in cross. It's too close to Ashlyn Harris. Was hit with good power, but handled there by Harris, who plays for the Orlando Pride. Played at the University of North Carolina, won three national championships there. He's also spent time playing in Sweden and Germany. WSL season right around the corner. Again, it's 2019 play. Now the long Sauerbrook's going to take the space here with a long touch. And we'll get it wide now here to Davidson. U.S. scored four first-half goals. All off the head. In the second half, they produced one. And that is your 5-0 scoreline against Belgium. They are intent on training to take uh, as much experience out of this game here as they can tonight. I think as these players go back to their pro teams, I think the one focus will be, of course, on fine-tuning but staying healthy. Getting Rapino back, getting Rose back, getting Kelly O'Hara back. Because if this is a team that's running on all cylinders, this is a team that's going to defend that world title. They have all the potential and the talent to do it. Krieger. It's interesting because we asked Jill Ellis yesterday about defending the title in 2015. <laughs> and her response was basically, every team's different. Not everyone who won the 2015 World Cup is here now. And four years is a long time. Yeah, she, she says, we don't want to say defending. We're attacking, we're attacking. This is a new it. team, go get it. <laughs> A 
couple little tugs. Tug first, the tug second. That's when you just say, okay, equal tugs. Let's keep playing. But, you know, that was reminiscent of Thursday night when Alex Morgan, just because of that explosiveness, just turned a defender who was a little bit comfortable. Don't sleep on Alex Morgan. Minute of stoppage time here. Press stands over it. He's going to clip it in towards the six. The header's going to go in. Jessica McDonald, who had a great opportunity moments earlier, might be feeling a little relief after <laughs> producing that header. And that is exactly what Jessica McDonald can bring to the game. So good on set pieces. This is the fifth header goal for the United States. Not the prettiest of goals, rolls off the back of her there, but she's in there contesting. And the U.S. just so dominant in the air in the Belgian box tonight. Third assist for Kristen Press. That will pull the curtain down tonight on this dominant performance from the United States. Six nil winners over Belgium. Your thoughts? I, I think they're going to derive a lot of confidence from that, from these two games. They obviously are going to shore up the goals, but they came back against an Australian team that was up. They put on a completely commanding performance tonight. And you look and say, okay, 61 days. Time to fine-tune, and that was a good one for the United States tonight. About two months away from France and the Women's FIFA World Cup this summer. We'll take a break here from Bank of California Stadium in Los Angeles. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up here tonight. What a night it has been. Western Mutual, this is what our version of financial planning looks like. Tomorrow's important, but so is making the most of the house before they're out of the house. Spend your life living. Find an advisor at NorthwesternMutual.com. I can't believe it. That we just hit the mother load of soft serve ice cream? No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Hey! We struck sprinkles! Geico. Believe it. Our MLS Match of the Week, presented by Audi Saturday, comes to you from Allianz Field. Darwin Quintero, Minnesota United, hosting New York City FC. That one, 5 Eastern, 4 Central on ESPN2. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. And for all your soccer needs, don't forget, check out ESPN FC on ESPN Plus. Every day as we come back here, the United States 6 0 winners over Belgium here. Julie Fatty, what did we learn here today? I think we learned that Carly Lloyd wants more minutes and she might get more from that. And, and we learned that the U.S. team is versatile. But what we didn't learn, because we saw players playing on all different lines, uh, what we didn't learn is how versatile and how successful they would be against a top level team. And that's the problem with the Belgian team today. Um, although a very good win, it wasn't the top tier that we've been seeing in the past. Five goals via the head here tonight. What we also learned was that 1999 team was a pretty darn good team. <laughs> Women's World Cup winners. They were here tonight, nearly everyone on the team. Legends like Michelle Akers, Julie Foudy, Lori Fair, Brandy Chastain. For Julie Foudy, Kate Bargraf, I'm Glenn Davis, our entire crew. Good night. From Bank of California Stadium in Los Angeles, the U.S. 6-0 winners over Belgium.